In light of the events of the past few days, we offer the following prayer. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred that infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And through our struggle and confusion, work to accomplish your purposes on earth, so that in your good time every people and nation may serve you in harmony. Creator of all, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Out of the darkness we cry to you, O God. Enable us to find in Christ the faith to trust your care even in the midst of pain. Assure us that we do not walk alone through the valley of the shadow, but that your light is leading us into life. Creator of all, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Creator of all, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, call us into a deeper relationship to be your church for the sake of the world. Help us to see with new eyes the injustices within church and society. Call us to have a loving heart that respects and uplifts the humanity and dignity of every person. Open our ears to listen to and learn from the experiences of people of color. Open our mouths to speak up and about injustices. Join us with others to work for racial equity and inclusion for all your people. Creator of all, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now invite you during the ringing of the singing bowl to center your thoughts on those petitions we have offered. Hello and welcome once again to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, Fremont, California, to our website and this service. We want to welcome you to this service of Pentecost, a high celebration of the church. That's why I'm wearing the chasuble. Uh, I won't be wearing it the whole time. It's very hot currently right now, but I did want to wear this because this is a festival Sunday, as I said. The Paschal candles going. Also, you'll notice to my right, it'd be to your left, our flaming bowl. This is the day of Pentecost where we celebrate the birth of the church. And you'll hear more about that, of course, in our reading. Once again, we do encourage you uh, to begin uh, after that wonderful prelude to center yourself uh, and we'll do the singing of the bowl. And we uh, invite you to open yourself up to the creator, the redeemer, and the sanctifier. begin with the invocation. The wind at our backs, we enter Jerusalem. Only to watch Jesus die on the cross. It spiraled so quickly. Trial, torture, crucifixion, death. But on the third day, the breath of God blew new life into our futures. Forty days with the risen Jesus. Before he ascended, Jesus reminded us that the Spirit will come. It was on Pentecost when the wind breathed into each and every one of us. Sacred breath moved through us, unlocked a song within the people of God. Breathe into us your hopes and dreams for a world filled with justice, love, and peace. Amen. We continue with the call to worship. In rushing wind, in cleansing fire, come, come, Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. come. In courage found and strength renewed, Come, Come, Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. come. In visions born, in dreams restored. Come, Come, Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. come. In hopes rekindled, in fears released. Come, Come, Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. come. In the church's sudden birth, in possibilities untold. 
Come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. In rushing wind, in cleansing fire, come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. And now our worship continues with a prayer of confession. Holy One, we are not sure what it would be like if the Holy Spirit blew through our churches again, as it did on the day of Pentecost. However, we want to speak the language that you have given louder and more clearly in our lives and church. So we pray, come Holy Spirit, pour out your fire of love upon us. To be the body of Christ in a world that is often hurting, hungry, and sick. We want to bring the good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to captives, to bring recovery of sight to the blind and set at liberty all that are bruised. As your disciples, we pray for all who suffer, are poor, despairing, burdened, blind, and bad. In your loving breeze, we pray for health and wholeness for those who are physically ill. For those who are mentally ailing. For those who are money sick. For those who are spiritually unwell. We pray for the healing of your creation and the renewal of the face of the land. We pray for those who are thirsty that they would drink from your fountain of living waters and never thirst again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. A litany for Pentecost. Flaming God of Pentecost, let us speak in tongues of comfort to those weeping over the bodies of their loved ones. Shot, Shot by, by troubled, troubled gunmen, gunmen killed, killed in border clashes, dying from COVID-19. Let us speak in tongues of courage to those living in fear of the next shooting, the next bomb, the illness that threatens. Let us speak in tongues of condemnation against laws and policies that promote violence, prioritizing the preferences of some over the lives of others. Let us speak in tongues of care for the most vulnerable in our world human beings, animals, and ecosystems. Let us speak in tongues of love for you and for your people. That your language might be our language. And when our tongues are still, when we have no words to speak, let our hearts burn with your fire. Let our ears hear your words in your, our own native tongue. Let our skin feel the wind of your spirit, a mighty wind, Blowing where it will. Amen. The prayer of the day. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Speak to our empty lives. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Breathe life into our dying dreams. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Refresh our fading hopes. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Inspire our church with vision. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Pour out your power and love. Come, Holy Spirit, come. As we worship, inflame us with wisdom and purpose. Amen. We continue with the introduction to the word. Can a locked door keep out the Holy Spirit from releasing us from our fears? Can a quaking spirit keep us from receiving the Spirit's gifts today? Can the church be born again after 2,000 years of inertia and indifference? Does the story of Pentecost have anything to say to us today? May we now listen for the word of God. The reading today is from Acts, the second, second chapter, beginning with the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as on fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each, had, each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are we not hearing those these who speak? Galileans, and how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, uh, Phrygia, and Campylia, 
Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and Proselytes, Cretans and uh, Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these, that, indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what it was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show potence in heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We continue with the response to the word. With the gifts of the Holy Spirit, may our hearts overflow with living water of this, on this day of Pentecost. And, and on, on every, every day, day of, of our, our lives. lives. I am thankful for my dog, Marley. I am thankful for all of my family. Okay, now on to children's time. Okay, it's that time once again. Uh, go ahead, get close to the glowing screen. If you're walking in a park or driving, pull over to the side of the road. Everybody who's young at heart, get close to the screen. Close, 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 close. There we go. All right, so today is Pentecost Sunday. That's why you see red all over. That's why you see a bowl of flames. Uh, we're celebrating what really uh, some call the birthday of the church. Uh, it's the day that the Spirit, uh, the first time the Spirit kind of blew across the world to those followers of Jesus, those men, women, and children. Um, how many of you have ever been in a storm? Raise your hand. Oh, oh yeah, good. Oh, okay, okay, good. What was the first thing that you, you felt? The wind, right? Yeah, okay, exactly. The wind, there's other things too, but the wind, you felt the wind. Now, when the wind, when, during that storm, when the wind was blowing, did it just hit one person? No, it hit two or three, it hit everybody who was in the area, right? And that's what happened when that Holy Spirit blew across those disciples of Jesus for that first time. Uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna kind of have a, 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 a kind of simulation of that. All right, what I want you to do is go ahead and get in a prayerful position. All right, good. No. Come on. Okay, good. Now you're in. All right, now close your eyes, and now we'll have the wind of the Spirit. All right, get ready. Oh, wait. Now oh, that's kind of a wimpy wind of the Spirit. Imagine the Spirit really blowing, and the Spirit is filling the whole house. You can't even hear the sound. It went all over. I'll turn this little kind of representation around. The wind literally filled the house where those men, women, and children were. And then it spilled out into the outside and there were people around and the people began to speak what they say speaking in tongues. They began to speak in different language, a language that they didn't know, but somebody who understood it was in the area. And it came and literally they heard about the power of God's love in the world. Now there's lots of things that we can do when it's windy, right? We can fly kites, there's lots of great things to do, right, exactly. I'll tell you something. What I want you to do, next time you feel the wind against your face, stop. And remember the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit that blows through all of creation. The Spirit that comes to everyone. That's what we're celebrating this day. But not just this day. It's really every day. Amen. So during these shelter-in-place days, I've noticed some interesting habits and actions of my family members. Uh, there's things that I didn't notice about them uh, and didn't know about them before, but now since we're uh, living together 24-7, I'm beginning to notice some things. But unfortunately, they're noticing some things about me. Well, what's really come up lately is my love of mounds bar. Uh, and what I have found out during the shelter in place time is that Mounds candy bags are very loud. I never knew it. You see how loud now? Let me just tell you something. 
What happens is my family, uh, apparently their sense of hearing has gotten more keen because every time I'm in the kitchen, uh, I, I think there's a microphone on these bags. They just, the sound just reverberates through the whole house. And then I hear from different rooms, uh, dad's in the mountains again. So I don't know, I, one of the little things, uh, I guess a benefit of sheltering in place. But uh, I wanted to talk about sound. I wanted to talk about uh, uh, when sound is magnified, when sound uh, fills a space, if you will. That's what we're talking about in the readings that you heard from the Medema family. They read the account in Acts of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit, we, you heard them read, the Holy Spirit uh, comes upon the disciples. Uh, the men, the women, and the children. Like the, and it's like a sound like the rush of a mighty wind fills the entire house. And then this huge universal sound becomes particular. Because it, it goes into uh, those disciples and they begin to speak in uh, uh, different languages. And people who are walking by this, this kind of has spilled out into the street. And they hear these people uh, speaking uh, 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 their language. They thought it was just a gathering of locals. But all of a sudden, this universal sound becomes particular. Becomes, it takes on a particular tone. And they understand it. No matter how many languages you might master in your lifetime, there will always be one that is known as your mother tongue. Your mother tongue is the language that first expressed your, your feelings, your fears, your desires, your dreams. Have you ever noticed, those of you who, who have traveled to different countries and different areas of this wonderful world, that you will be in an area that, uh, in which they are not speaking the, your particular language, and all of a sudden, you'll hear a phrase or something from your mother tongue. And automatically, your attention will go there. And people that you might, obviously you didn't know, you would come up and you begin to speak that mother tongue language. It feels almost like you got a slice of home. Well, that's what those persons felt as they were walking in the streets. And they heard this great cacophony, this great rushing wind sound all of a sudden become particular. And Pentecost, then, that first Pentecost, that first kind of uh, blowing through of God's breath, it's a language that people recognize, and then it becomes new. The gift of the Holy Spirit transforms each of us into what I would say multilingual uh, communicators. As human beings, we speak uh, different languages, really. Uh, sometimes in our interactions, sometimes with our lives, we speak a language of despair and disappointment. Uh, sometimes we speak a language of guilt and betrayal. Sometimes we speak a language of jealousy and greed. But when we confess Jesus Christ, when we open ourselves to the breath of God, when we uh, experience then the washing of Jesus, the newness of life, we speak a different language. We speak a language of hope and salvation. We speak a language of wholeness and health. We speak a language of future and fulfillment. We speak a language of forgiveness and love. We speak a language of hospitality and acceptance. But I gotta tell you something. We're not too fluent in the Pentecost language of hope and salvation, wholeness, health, fulfillment, peace, hospitality, acceptance. We are still, as we know, especially during this time, we are still broken people living in a, in a broken world. We're not in paradise. We're still bruised and battered. And we're living in, uh, uh, and we're living with wounds that, well, some of the wounds that we live with will never heal. Some of us will limp for a lifetime. But that brokenness 
that's washed over with the breath of God, that, that brokenness, that disappointment, that struggle, when it's washed, when, it's, when the breath of God blows across it, gives us a special way to speak to one another. Let me say, it, it, people who have been broken, people who are in pain, people who have been hurt, can hear and understand others who are also broken and hurt. Because we know what it's like to be broken by hatred, we can speak of a, a healing love of Christ's life. Because we know, some of us know what it's like to be broken by despair, or we can speak of the healing hope of Jesus Christ's forgiveness. Because we know what it feels like to be broken by doubt, we can speak of the healing faith in Christ's promises. It's a phrase that was, has been used many times, and I think it's appropriate for now too. We're really what's called wounded healers. Because we've experienced them. We have the gift of then being more open to those who are in the midst of that. And we can bring about a word of hope and promise and new life. Interesting thing, Christianity uh, isn't growing too much in North America and in parts of Europe, but it is growing in other parts of the world. Well, why is that? Is it because we in North America and we in, in the European countries, is it because we've, we've stopped letting the breath of God blow into our life and into our churches? Maybe it's time for the church to stop relying on its own powers, its own programs, its own blueprints. Maybe it's time that we here in the church in North America, maybe it's time that we... Well, we open ourselves like the disciples did to the Pentecost moment, to the breath of God filling. Now, some won't like it because it might be like chaos. But we need to open ourselves to that breath. When we do church, we're concerned about protecting our position and our place. But when we do Pentecost, we're more concerned with being yoked to Christ and being Christ's hands and feet and, and, and presence in the world. When we do church, we're more concerned about tradition and order. And when we do Pentecost, we're more concerned and open to the power of God's possibilities. When we do church, we want God to leave us alone. When we do Pentecost, we listen for where God is calling us to, to, to go. When we do church, we, we want to maintain the institution. When we do Pentecost, we set ourselves on holy fire and we go out into the world. Maybe it's time we stop doing church and we start living Pentecost, feeling the breath of God in our lives, opening ourselves up to the presence. It's time for the world to hear some different sounds, the sounds of hope, the sounds of love, forgiveness, acceptance, and peace. We need to be agents of the breath of God in the world. We need to bring new sounds. Amen. Holy Spirit, bless the gifts we bring with your powerful presence. 
Through these gifts, bring new life, new hope, new visions of life, new dreams of hope, and new possibilities for unity and love in our world. Amen. The Prayer of the Church Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit for, of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope as you have led your saints in all times and places. Stir us in a Stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear now the prayers of our hearts that silently are alive. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen well our time together has uh, come to a close once again we want to thank you uh, for taking the time to find us, uh, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Fremont, California. Uh, please know that we continue to keep you in our prayers, and we ask you to keep us in yours. And so as you go out into the world, bring a sound, the sound, uh, making a, a, a cacophony of sounds, the sounds of love and hope and grace and acceptance and peace. I offer you these words for that journey. In our moments of chaos, God is with us. In our moments of calm. God is with us. In our moments of life. God is with us. Hallelujah. We go as a Pentecost people touched by fire. Stirred by wind to mend the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We conclude with the dismissal. Go out into a world that needs the Spirit of God carried on our lips and in our loving arms. Go out. Into, into the world, world to live as God's resurrected people. Go out. We go, go out, out on the breath of God's holy wind. Thank you.